Good afternoon on this Sunday, January 26, 2020. This is Fine Like Clown Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Worth, out of G Vegas, little town outside of Boston. As always, Fine Like Clown Podcast is brought to you by G Vegas Buffalo Sauce with a spicy, sweet, savory taste of game time. There's only one G Vegas available at www.gvegas.webs.com. This is episode 48. We are creeping up on the Big 50, and hope I got a special guest for 50. Uh, speaking of special comedians, we're here to talk about Kevin James, legendary comedian. To do that, I have a comedian out of Connecticut, another Kevin, Kevin Thor, on the phone. Kevin, welcome to the show. Hi, right, thanks for having me, Dennis. I really appreciate it. All right, thanks for being on. I asked you to pick what comedian you wanted to discuss, and you chose Kevin James. What made you pick him? Uh, you know, I saw the King Queens when I was a kid, and I wasn't really into it. And then I finally saw one of his stand-ups. And I was laughing so hard, I started getting into King Queens, you know, and won you over. Like style of comedy too. Okay, what uh, do you have a favorite special of his or something that you watch? What one was it that won you over? Uh, the one that won me over was really his uh, 2001 that he had on Comedy Central. Okay. Uh, I just I couldn't stop laughing. Different scenarios that he had, you know, being a big guy and he's you know super energetic and stuff. I really like that. You connected with him, all right. Well, he's best known for his role of. Doug Hefferman on CBS, The King of Queens. Uh, 2006, he was nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award for the best lead role in a comedy series for it. But once he won you over to that series, well, what do you remember best about that TV series? Uh, I just uh, Probably his, uh, his father-in-law, Arthur. He always got me. I thought he was hilarious. Um, just him being like a big guy. and he, he reminded me a lot of like Chris Farley, just how energetic he was being a big guy. And, uh, later, I found out that he actually was a very athletic person. He was just a big right. guy. I'm know? a big guy, too, so I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. Same here. Uh, did you have a favorite episode? I remember one I watched. I wasn't into the show a lot. I did catch a few episodes where he, he quit his job, and he thought he was going to get another job at another shipping company, and then he went over, and the guy told him that he'd hire him. He's like, well, that was just general talk, and he realized he was going to lose his job. But what well, what was one of your favorite episodes? Uh, probably one of my favorites was... Uh, I think they, they got new uniforms at their shipping company that they were at. Right. And he, they uh, they made a whole stink about it, and they were just upsetting. But everyone, you know, he was really upset about it, and I think everyone around him was like, oh, it's not a big deal, it's just a uniform <laughs> change. But it really mattered to him. It was a big and deal. I just thought it was funny. Change is tough. I've been at the same job 22 years, and somebody new just bought the place, oh, and wow. it's like, everything's changing, and when you're used to stuff for that long, nobody likes change, but... Uh, let's see, after yeah, that, uh, yeah. after that episode got done, he went on to do another episode, uh, on CBS, uh, Kevin Can Wait, which lasted from 2016 to 18, and won in 2017, uh, People's Choice Award. Uh, i never seen an episode of that, do you remember that any, or? No, I never got a chance to watch that. I heard it, I heard good things about it, but I never really got a chance to watch it. Alright, it only lasted two seasons, so I guess, uh, he was on his way out on the TV thing, but. If you can have one hit show, I mean, the King of Queens was definitely the hit show for him. It's, it's tough to repeat your success. Oh. I don't care how good you are. Yeah, no, that's very true. Very few can do yeah, it, but um, let's see. He got into uh, films in uh, 2005. He did uh, Hitch. Uh, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. He did with Adam Sandler in 2007. Uh, Mall Cop in 2009. Grown Ups 2010. Zookeeper 2011. Here Comes the Boom in 2012, and Pixels in 2015. Do you got a favorite movie of his out of those, or? Uh, probably uh, Here Come the Boom. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't think it was super funny, but it was, you know, I, I first I saw it, and I was like, ah, you know, this is kind of whack. You know, it's a big guy trying to be a fighter. Like, it's, it's a weird story. Um, but then I read up on him later, and I found out that he actually does train in MMA, and he does do all that stuff, and he's actually a very athletic guy. Yeah, he was very athletic in high school. He had a back injury that kind of ended his career and doing that was which way he got into comedy. But I guess Mall Cop would be his biggest box office success. And then I know, you know, uh, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry and here comes the boom. They kind of had a, like a cult following, you know? Yeah, no, it definitely did. It was one of the, yeah, probably one of his top movies that he was in, which, uh, was, you know, it's a great movie to, you know, smoke a bone to and watch and just have a good laugh. Yeah, now Mall Cop, I mean, it, did, it didn't get good reviews, but it did really good at the box office, and they did come out with a Mall Cop 2, so, I mean, sometimes I guess the pros can't always call what's going to be a hit and what's not going to be. Yeah, no, very true. Yeah, uh, no, that's a classic of it, because I like that movie a lot, actually. 
Then he went on to do some uh, voice work in films like Barnyard, uh, Monster House, and Hotel Transylvania. And this is always a smart move. I always say, like, uh, you know, Shrek and the B-movie with Jerry Seinfeld. And doing a cartoon is kind of a safe move uh, if you don't want your next movie to flop. I mean, wh well, what's your opinion of voiceover work? Uh, I like it, you know, and uh, he's always seemed to me to be, like, a family kind of comic. You know, yeah, he does. Right, right. Even, like, his, uh, his stand-up in 2001, it's... Uh, he rarely, you know, he doesn't swear. The most he says is like "damn" and "ass." You know, he's he's very clean comic. So I think that's kind of his alley. You know, doing little cartoons like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, I remember seeing that when I was a kid too, uh, like Barnyard. I saw that, so I enjoyed that stuff a lot. I guess it's what you grow up watching. If you grow up watching clean comics, that's the style you're gonna have. And if you grow up watching dirty comics, that's the style you're gonna have. I mean, you work one a heck of a lot more getting paid if you work in clean comedy. Or if you do dirty comedy, you know, you can get the house roaring, but it's not really something you're going to get paid to do unless you're on a mainstream level. Right. Well, right. what do you do in your comedy yeah, routine? Yeah. I mean, do you work clean or dirty yourself? Oh, I have... What was that? Well, what do you do in your comedy routine? Do you work clean or do you work dirty? Uh, I, you know, when I first started, I, I did some clean stuff. You know, I really, I did a lot of like, uh, kind of like self-deprecating kind of things, you uh -huh. know. I wasn't swearing too much, but... The more I do it, I realize, you know, some crowds just like it when you, you know, you drop an F-bomb. Sure, I mean, making fun of yourself yeah. is, is always a good way to get a laugh. You know, you can offend people if you're making fun of them, but uh, they say it's a lot easier to make a clean joke dirty than it is to make a dirty joke clean, so if you start out clean, it's I, easier I, to go dirty. Yeah, no, I kind of believe that. As I, uh, you know, get more into stand-up and stuff, I uh, start writing jokes and uh, sometimes, you know, I'll just, I'll add an F-bomb and it just, uh, it maybe adds a little bit of spice into it. Uh, but it's definitely, it's, it's hard to write clean comedy and I respect them a lot for doing that, you know. Sure. How, how did you get started in comedy? Where was, where was your first gig at? Uh, my first gig was actually at that, uh, Midway up in Boston. Midway up in Boston? Okay. Let's see, Kevin James got his start on, uh, in Long Island at the East Side Comedy Club. Um, and then after getting a start there, he gained popularity beyond being talk shows. Now, if you're doing really good on the club scene, you know, I mean, eventually you get your break. I know the, uh, the comedy studio up in Boston there, they're, they're famous for getting people on the Conan O'Brien show. But, uh, Kevin James went on to be on shows like The Late Show, The Tonight Show, Conan, Dennis Miller Live, uh, The Rosie O'Donnell Show, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Live with Regis and Kathy. Do you, do you remember any of those performances on TV? Oh yeah, yeah. I saw the one where he was on Conan. Actually, I do like Conan a lot because he's a uh, he's a big Irish guy, and there's not a lot of big Irish guys in comedy. I see. Right. Well, well, what do you remember best about his performance on Conan? Uh, he was funny. You know, he was just he was going off the rip. You know, he wasn't didn't you know didn't have anything prepared. And you can just tell by the way he talks. He's just you know he's a laid back kind of funny guy. Some people can just wing it and be more funny than if they write stuff. I mean, you either got it or you don't. Yeah, so. But every crowd's different. If it was the same crowd, it'd be boring, you know? you you got to see what the crowd's going to react to and go with that, you know? Yep, no, that's very true. Yeah, he, he's he's good at just, you know, pulling the crowd, getting everyone's attention. You ever have a night where you do material and it just crushes, then like a couple nights later you do the exact same material and nobody likes it? <laughs> it's just a different crowd? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, oh, of course. Of that course. happens a lot in comedy. Yeah. But it'd get boring yeah, if every night was the same and it'd get boring. That, that's what keeps the challenge alive, I guess. Yeah, no, it's true. You know, I, uh, every, I, you know, the more and more I do it, I, um, I try not to blame the crowd, and you know, it's a bad thing to blame the crowd. And you know, there's sometimes I have material and it's just it's killing, it's doing right. great. I have a good, you know, and I go off the rip a little bit, and it's still just hitting. You know, the crowd's awesome. Then I'll go to another place and do the same material, and it just bombs. You know. Yeah, a weak comic Brant so, blames the crowd. If a crowd gives you their attention, you're the comic. It's up to you to get the laugh, and it ain't up to them to, you know, it's up to you to earn it. So. Right, no, it's very true. Yeah, I never, I never try to. Uh, I heard that's you know one of the worst things you can do is blame a crowd because it's, you know, if, if you're good enough, you can make any cloud ra uh, cloud ra laugh. Yeah, know, exactly. It takes, you know, you can be funny, but it takes years and years and years to be a pro comic because it's not just being funny. You got to how to learn how to handle any situation that approaches you in a in a comedy show, and it takes years and years to master that art. Yeah, no, it really does. I. Uh, uh, one big thing that everyone keeps telling me is try to work on my uh, crowd work, you know, because the routine I have, it's kind of, it just flows into each other. Right. And, you know, it, it's tough to get the crowd work in, but um, I see some comics do it and they make it look easy. 
you know, and uh, that's one thing I need to work on, I think, more. Some crowds you need to interact, and some crowds, you know, they, they take offense. So you got to feel out every crowd and see what it is. But uh, let's see. I know you, you chose him, so obviously Kevin James, he's got a special part in your heart. But Comedy Central's greatest list of all time, 100 greatest comedians, put him at number 89. Now, do you think that's a fair place for him? Uh, not really. You know, it's just like the style of his comedy and the way that he thinks and the fact that he's doing it clean, I think he should be higher up, to be honest. Sure, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, you're putting in there with the Richard Pryors and the George Carlin and all this, you know, they're the legends, so, you know, in everybody's mind they can do no wrong, but it's becoming a new generation where if you ask the kids of today, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm older than you, obviously, but, you know, who are your legends of comedy? They go with Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle and Jerry Seinfeld, where my generation would have been the Carlins and Pryors, so... Maybe if it was, you know, Comedy Central's this generation, I think he'd be a lot higher than... But if you put him in of all time, then I guess you're going with every generation, so... Um, yeah, no, that's true. He was on TV shows like uh, Just for Laughs. Do you remember him on Just for Laughs? Yes, I do, yep. All right, tell me a little bit about that. What do you remember about that? Uh, I remember he... Because, uh, well, the 2001 stand-up that he has... Yep. Uh, the ones on Just for Laughs, he did do a couple of those, but it was really interesting. I was actually watching a couple the other day, and um, it was cool to see him do a bit, and then I got to see the special, and the bit changed, or, he, you know, he extended it, or, you know, he changed one or two words, and it, and it, it, it made the joke, you know. It, Makes like, it, yeah, you're constantly learning, yeah, that. no matter how good a joke is, you can always improve it, right? Yeah, no, of course, it, it, but it was really cool just to see you know, him do a joke, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny, and then I saw him do it again, and he just added a little bit more flavor, maybe moved around a little bit more, you know, uh, went off the trail a little bit more with the joke, and it made the joke even more. Even you more know, funny. Really cool to see the joke change, and it'd be even funnier. All right, let's see. He's a regular at the Montreal Comedy Festival. Have you gotten involved in any comedy festivals, or? Uh, no, not so far. Um, the only, uh, I've just been doing a lot of open mics, and stuff like that just you know kind of getting started work out your uh, art before the only place you... I did what was that you work out your art before you go into a festival yeah I mean you got to be ready for the right, festival right. yeah yeah no I, I did do a show up at uh Mohegan Sun the comics roadhouse how'd that go for um, you they gave uh it went pretty well actually I was I was pretty happy you know um a lot of people told me I did well and stuff I had a couple of my friends there and you know they were telling me I did well but who really knows when it's your friends. Yeah, your friends are going to tell you that anyway. I mean, the crowd tells you if you're getting laughs, you're doing good. If you're not, you're not. I mean, there's no... Yeah, no, it's true. I, I thought I did well up there. Uh, I got another show coming up next month up there again. It's a it's a really cool venue. They're very professional up there. and You know, really good guys and stuff like that up there. Well, that's cool. I mean, the comedy festivals, I mean, com I've always said there's three parts of comedy. There's the political side, the business side, and the being funny side. And unfortunately, the being funny side always comes in dead last. And... The comedy festival, it's really, it's a political glitch, and it's a who-you-know glitch, and you have to pay money to enter, and that don't guarantee you get in, and it's more, you know, if you're friends with somebody, they'll get in before somebody who's funnier than them, and I, I never really, I, I always thought about trying out for the Boston Comedy Festival, but it's more of a, a popularity contest than it is a being funny contest, in my opinion. That's what I found most contests. Uh, then there's yeah, a lot of contests where... It's got nothing to do with how funny you are. At the end, it's whoever gets the biggest applause. So, I mean, whoever brings the most friends, they get the most applause and they win and don't even mean they have the best set, you know? Right. No, that's very true. I mean, you know, I, I, I've been to a couple of the mics and, uh, you know, the guys that know the host and stuff like that, they'll get a really good spot for doing randoms. Right. You can tell, like, who knows them well. You know, they get a great intro and then they get a great spot, you know, so... Yeah. You can tell, but, you know, that's all, I think, a process of uh, just grinding it out, you know. It's all part of the business, yeah. I mean, it's a dirty business. We all know that. It's the business you've chosen, so you got to put up with the, the dirt if you're going to make it. I mean, don't don't let it kick you down, then then you lose. you got to put up with it, and you got to try and find a way to beat it. Um, let's see. He put out his uh, major special that everybody remembers him for is Kevin James' Sweat the Small Stuff. Uh, what do you remember about that special? Uh, that's that, uh, 2001 on Comedy Central. I, uh, I rewatched it again, and, um, that came out, that was, actually, it was probably one of the first stand-ups I ever saw. Um, I think I was around, like, seven years old when I saw that. Okay, so that was and, his most uh, popular one. I mean, that's the one most people remember him for as far as stand-up goes. Yeah, no, I, I, he has, like, uh, like I said, too, he has so many jokes that, uh, I saw on Just for Laughs, and then he redid them, 
on his 2001 stand up and he worked on it a little more and they just it hit and they were funnier and uh, definitely you know one of my favorites by him well what's favorite. your favorite joke of his I mean does he have a favorite routine you have of his or what what's your favorite one he, yeah probably my favorite one um, he did a bit where he was talking about uh, skiing water skiing yeah for the first time and he uh, <laughs> He talks about talking with his friends, and he's like, yeah, if you've never been, don't go. You know, <laughs> Especially for a big guy. Good, you know, you, you know and uh, <laughs> they, he goes on and talks about how, like, uh, he found out that he screams the same whether a great white shark is going to eat him or a piece of seaweed touches his toe. <laughs> you know. Just the observations that he does of a water skiing, right? Um, yeah, no, it, it, it's hilarious to see, man. It, that, that's probably one of my favorites. That one in the... Uh, He's got a muffin joke. He talks about how big muffins are getting. Oh, okay. And he talks about how like uh, they got small ones, and he uh, he does great with that one. You always go for the big guy. Always goes for the big muffin. You don't want the small one. Let's see. After that, years yeah. later, he put out another special. Uh, Kevin James never don't give up, and he put that out on Netflix. Which Netflix seems to be the place for comedy. They're just taking over. They got all the big names, and um, you know they're taking away from Comedy Central a lot. But do you remember anything about uh, Never Don't Give Up? Um, I don't remember too much from it. I did see it, you know, a while ago. Right. Uh, I didn't get a chance to rewatch that one. Um, but I, I, you're right about how, like, uh, Netflix is kind of taking over where Comedy Central kind of left off. You know, I think they're doing a great job with it right now. Well, everybody's going to the Internet. That's where everybody, that's why podcasts are taking off, because you can listen to them and, you know, double on the computer while you're listening to them. It takes your attention. But I think television is going to be a thing of the past. I really do. I think everything's going toward the computer and... That's the day and age we, as far as streaming shows and streaming movies, and people are going to the internet instead of the TV. No, I don't think you're wrong at all. You know, um, uh, and I, you know, I notice it. I'm 25, so I notice it in my generation too. Like a lot of my friends, um, they're just they're not even buying cable anymore. You know, really? they got so many streaming platforms. That's, there's no need for it. That's the generation's new thing. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, you can debate. But I mean, that's where everybody's going, and you got to go where the people are, and it's definitely the internet. Um, Let's see, he befriended uh, Ray Romano in uh, comedy, and he uh, was a guest star. was how he got his start on TV. He starred on every, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Do you remember the guest spots on that show? Um, I, that was a little bit after. You know, I, I didn't really ever see that. I do know Everybody Loves Raymond, but I don't remember ever him guest spotting on that. I watched that. Ray Romano, he really gave him a, you know, a great shot on that show. He gave him a main character, and... I think they were trying to come up to, they were, they wanted to go golfing together and they were trying to fi find up a way to con his wife and to let him go and golf. And <laughs> they worked out the perfect routine on how to set it up so she'd say yes. It, it was funny, but you could tell he was on his way up in that, that he was going to get his own series, so. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I could, I'm sure if I watched a lot of his uh, stuff when he just started out, you can just tell that, you know, he's funny enough where he could, he could just do it all, you know. I mean, some of his better-known not movies. He did some cameos to start out in Fifty First Dates and uh, Hitch with Will Smith. Then he wanted to do some films uh, that weren't so so much known. Uh, Grown Ups, The Dilemma, Zookeeper, Here Comes the Boom, uh, Little Boy, The Memoirs of an International Assassin, uh, Sandy Wexler. Do you remember any of those movies? Some of the movies that he wasn't so popular in. Yeah, I do. I remember like Zookeeper and stuff like that. And you know, it, it, I think it's tough because, you know, especially when you're a comedian like he is, uh, you're playing yourself every time, you know, right. so if the writing's there and it's all coming together, you're going to do great, you know, but, uh, if he, you know, I'm sure he had some influence on whatever he's doing, but, you know, when you go to see a movie that has a famous comedian like that, you're going to see the comedian, you know, you're not right, going to right. see Right, right, you're going to see the character, the you're not going to see the movie, person. right. But, I mean, even, yeah, even the, the biggest stars of our time, I don't think there's a single comedian that can say everything they every movie they ever did was a great hit i mean everybody's got that one glitch on their their resume you know that wasn't really good yeah no of course i mean that uh a great uh, i was watching these series of videos and uh this guy he interviews you know famous comedians and um well you know this is when i was first starting now and one of the great questions he'd always ask is what was your worst bomb you know and i thought that was cool that he Never asked the comedian, hey, did, you know, have you bombed? Maybe right. have you kind of not done well? He always asked, what was your worst bomb? Everybody, every, he knew everybody you know, had, right. Everyone has a bomb, 
Yeah. Well, I put it out there once on Facebook. I asked the question, what do you remember better, your worst performance or your best? And everybody said their worst. Everybody remembers the worst but better than their best because yeah. you just you can't stand being yeah. up there. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, that's so true. Yeah, that uh, my my worst bomb is definitely burned into my head for sure. But you learn from it. Every time you bomb, you learn from it, and you you know your mistakes, and you, that's how you get better. Michael Jordan said, you know, he he, he made the game winning shot fifty times because he missed it a hundred. That's how you learn, you know, from your mistakes. So. Yeah. Uh, no, let's very see. True. Uh, before he had his big hits on TV, he also did some other uh, TV work where he was a guest star. He was on uh, the Cosby Show. He was on Becker. Uh, Martial Law, Elmo's Christmas Countdown, and Live and Maddie. Uh, do you remember any of the appearances on those TV shows? Or uh, I don't really remember any. Of, I mean, I watched like Sesame Street when I was a kid, so yeah, I definitely remember uh, you know Elmo and stuff like that. I can only imagine what he'd be like on that show. Yeah, I watched uh, Cosby and Becker. I don't remember him on any of those, but I didn't know that was probably before he was popular, so you didn't recognize him at the time, you know. Right, right. No, it, it makes sense though. That kind of fits his repertoire, you know, being kind yeah. of a family comedian. Clean comic. Family. You know, seems like a family guy. Those know? are all family shows, so that's a good point. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna give you the stage here before we go. Um. You being a fan of Kevin James, what would you want other people to know about him? Uh, you know, I think he's he's you know one of the best out there, especially growing up. You know, seeing him. Uh, he's got a clean humor, you know, and he still brings the laughs. So, they, you know, it's it's worth watching. Uh, he'll do a Netflix special or his 2001 that he did on Comedy Central. That one's fantastic. Um, and it's cool just to see him do his thing, you know. Sure, and if, you, if you're family and you want to watch with your kids, you know, that's something you can watch with your kids is just where, you know, some of these comedians you got to wait till they go to bed. So it's cool when you can watch a comedian with family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's very true. <laughs> All right, we got a section of the show at the end. I end off every show with trivia. I'm going to ask you three trivia questions about Kevin James. I will say that nobody ever does good on trivia because you think you know people until you're on the spot. Most people go 0 for 3. Only a couple people have gone 2 for 3. Most go 1 for 3 or 0 for 3, but it's information, so you ready to give it a shot? Yeah, yeah, I'll try it out. All right, what other celebrity did Kevin James go to high school with? I'm just, I'm going to have to say Adam Sandler because he seems very close to him. It was actually wrestler Mick Foley. And, oh. yeah, and they said that Kevin James, you mentioned he was athletic. He was on the wrestling team in high school, and he actually held the number one spot over wrestler Mick Foley. Mick Foley was number oh, two. Wow. Kevin James was number one on his team, and he eventually sustained an injury, and that was why he didn't follow through with his wrestling career or anything in sports because of that injury that was why you get into comedy so who know Mick Foley wrestler um, alright second trivia question uh, what was the first television show that he was ever a part of oh jeez this is going way back there yeah oh man well the first time I ever saw him was on King of Queens but I know that's not going to be right <laughs> He was actually uh, uh, no y'all go, go ahead you want to take a wild guess. All right, uh, uh, everybody hates Raymond. That's, no, it was actually the new Candid Camera, awesome. and I remember the original oh, wow. Candid Camera was on in my parents' time. I remember them watching it, but I remember for a short time they came out with the new Candid Camera, and he was one of the people who went up and tried to pull scams on people and get a laugh out of them on the new Candid Camera show. So, really, who knew that about Kevin James? Right, all right. Yeah, right. I gotta see that. That sounds actually pretty good. All right. Now you mentioned here's the third question. Um, you you mentioned he did the family stuff and he was uh, on what children's award show was he the host? Oh, well, I'm gonna have to say the Nickelodeon. All right, you got that one right. Nickelodeon Kids Choice All Award. Right. So you won for three. You didn't go. You did just about as good as everybody <laughs> else. All right. Well, Kevin, I want to thank you for being on Funny Like a Clown podcast. I wish you luck at the open mic scene, and hopefully uh, you're starting to hit the bigger stuff, and sounds like Roadhouse is working out for you, so good luck, and long live Kevin James. All right. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. We'll talk soon. Be good. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Comedian Kevin James being discussed by comedian Kevin Thor. That's a lot of Kevins right there, but... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you got to respect, I mean, anybody can walk around and, you know, talk dirty. And uh, when you can get a laugh from people talking clean, it is, it's, I don't know why, but it's so much more difficult. I guess it's your, you know, like I said, what you grew up with, you know, if you, if you grew up watching clean comedians, that's how your mind rolls. And if you grew up watching dirty comedians, that's how your mind rolls. But if you want to get paid in this business, um, you know, working clean, that's the way to do it. And you know, working clean, it's a steady and it's a, it's a great humor. And some people can get the crowd worn and some people, you know, can't. But uh, it's it's I, I respect clean comedians because I find it difficult. I, I can do it, but it's much more difficult because I grew up listening to the Dirty Comedians. So hats off to Kevin James for being a family comic. And there's nothing more important in family. It's more important than anything. Your family's number one in life and everything else is number two. This is Funny Like Clown Podcast. Uh, hey, listen with your family, listen with your friends, tell your neighbors. Uh, we're discussing comedians. Hope you tune in next episode. Till then, keep laughing. Laughter is the best medicine. Good night.